Hi, I'm Graham Bullock from learningalias.co.uk and this is the first tutorial on how to surface a polygonal mesh. So it's a mesh to NURBS tutorial. Actually, uh, most of the surfaces that I build are uh, single spans, so it's really a mesh to Bezier. So this is going to be the kind of beginner's tutorial, if you like, uh, but related uh, to the whole car exterior. And in the first part here, I'm going to show you how to put on the uh, the basic uh, surfaces. So, at least some of them. So let's turn on the surfaces that I've made, and you see this is what we're going to build. I'm going to just quickly turn off the shading, pick the surfaces, and I'm just going to shade up the surfaces this time. And you can see that. Now we have really nice highlights and th this is what it's all about, this is what we're going to uh, learn in this tutorial. Now as you can see the uh, mesh gets in the way so we want to be able to see it so we can attach things to it and work from it but we don't want it to uh, occupy the scene uh, quite so dramatically. So let's go to over here to display and uh, transparency and then mesh transparency and just you know turn that quite a long way down like that and then if you want to make it uh, even more uh, invisible you can change the mesh density like so okay but I'll leave it like that so that we can see it in the video so there are my surfaces I get rid of those and we'll start to build new surfaces so first thing we're going to do take a plane on surface and set it to degree 3 and then you can just curve snap it somewhere there on the y equals zero and sometimes when I'm doing this I prefer to work in I'm just going to push uh, hotkeys here uh, I use control L that's where I set my keyboard up and I can see this uh, which is on uh, all left perspective so I can get a quite a good idea of what's going on and, and you know have uh, just two views uh, in the window so I'm just going to swing that around there to make that a little bit more compatible there and then scale make sure you're hard up against the y equals zero edge there I've just put these curves in here quickly to uh, find out where that point of tangency is there and that's where I'm going to lay my surface to that point or just a little bit shy of it so let me just quickly show you how I use these helper curves just lay down three curves the middle one is a degree 5 and it's aligned to, to the two parent curves and then using move CV I'll take the two positional CVs and I'll move them around until until I get obviously I'm exaggerating here until I get everything on the theoretical point there with the G3 curvature and the same here and whilst we're in F5 we're going to scale the surface to bring it close to this construction point but don't bring it all the way there uh, finish a little bit shy and that will become evident the reason for that uh, later so we've got something like this then the surface quite close in alignment to the shape of the the rear of the car in F6 and now we can start to direct model it onto the mesh don't bring it up past the theoretical here and don't bring it down below that edge there for the moment so take CV move and we're going to just move in take CV move and we're going to move in in NUV
Now take uh, X form CV, transform CV, and pick hull, move hull, and then come over here and switch on objects edit and symmetrical modeling. So I've already got mine on, and you get this plane of symmetry here so that you know that you are in symmetrical modeling mode. And I want to move in um, NUV here. So I'm going to just bring this in now towards the, the mesh a bit. Nothing too precise at the moment. And come in here and you want to be inside of that construction point for the moment. Don't come past it here. Okay, so you know that's an approximation. We can now uh, slide hull. So that's the first stage, and now we need to have some idea of um, how we're getting on. So we're going to use this tool now, the cross-section editor, and NZ. And let's put our sample 200 apart. Yeah, perhaps we have a few more samples. We'll put them 100 apart. Now we have cross sections turned on on the mesh and on the surface and you can see that it's quite tight here and there's quite a big gap there so uh, first thing I'm going to do is move the hull in uh, NUV so I'm going to grab it here and then move it I need some sensitivity on that won't do move it just a touch here at the bottom you can see how the two sets of uh, cross sections start to line up now we don't need to move the hull here because we're quite good at the bottom and so we're going to go to move CV and uh, stick with NUV and then come down here and we go for maximum sensitivity on the mouse and then we'll move this in here okay I think that's fairly close perhaps we'll just move it a little bit here and now it's time to use more sensitive means of measuring Come down here and get the deviation map. Uh, acceptable distance we're working to in standard industry standard of of one, but we'll set that to two to start with. Will help us to to zone in, and then our ramp distance we'll set that to three. And we're going to pick the surface first. Hit the space bar, and then it prompts you to pick the mesh. It's telling us that this part here is within tolerance. So that's red because it's not touching the mesh or it's way out of tolerance. And then we have inside here, the surface is inside the mesh, right? So let's start to 
rectify that. You can use the nudge keys are a lot more sensitive than using the mouse. I like to look for this kind of snowflakey effect that tells you that you're very close to the mesh when you see that. We don't have enough CVs at the moment to do everything we want to do so we can only do so much. And now I think it's time to uh, up the degrees so pick the surface and go over to CP and change it up to 5 by five let's start now it's a good idea to go over to use um, NUV mode uh, sorry now it's a good idea to go over and use uh, proportional modification mode and in the nudge keys and remember we're two millimeters from the mesh that's our our setting and we need to change it now. We need to get a bit, be a bit more sensitive about things now. So, also we can turn off the random color shader. We don't need that, and any other shade that we might have on. Okay. Uh, right. You can see that we've got a look a gap there. And everywhere else it looks quite good doesn't it so we know we're getting close to where we need to be I'm just going to rectify that because that's so obviously out and now we want to change our settings on the deviation map so let's bring that back up here we're going to go down to acceptable distance 1 and we'll set our ramp distance to to 2 pick the surface and pick the mesh again it's the same each time you do it and you see that we're we're sitting there comfortably uh, within the the green zone which is where we want to be now if we want to know how accurate we are we can do a surface to mesh evaluation so let's do that just before we we do that we need to bring this down because it's going to measure the the deviation between there and the mesh which is no good so we need our surface to be contained here within the part of the mesh that isn't filleted so we'll take the extend tool and just bring that down a touch there now we can go over to locator and we'll pick the mesh to surface locator pick the mesh and then pick the surface and we see that our minimum deviation is one ten thousandth of a millimeter there and our maximum deviation is 0.89 there so we're within tolerances and that was all pretty quick and straightforward let's put the zebra stripes on and you know that's very important to eyeball your surface using using stripes uh, you know you're looking for beautiful flow like that if uh, you know if, if you if you get used to using evaluation techniques and uh, curvature comb all the time then you won't go stray far off the straight and narrow when you're modeling
anytime you want to get rid of the um, cross-sectional information just come over to the cross-section editor and hit clear and that gets rid of that and if you want to clear the mesh as well just to keep your scene uh, nice and tidy one thing I do like to do is to pick the surface and then for a finish put on the cross sections on let's say Z and and Y and then you see I could put more on but I, you know I have enough really for what I'm doing and you see that the surface is looking symmetrical for a start that's very important you know that I haven't made a mistake with my symmetrical modeling and made it asymmetric it's symmetrical and these curved combs are nice and smooth now just in case you're wondering why my surface is smaller than the model it's because once I get it right I will extend it the extra distance that I need and extend it up here so that I can overbuild well that's uh, I think a good place to finish the first part of this tutorial I hope that you found it interesting I've been Graham Bullock from learningalias.co.uk thank you for your time